Have you ever watched a trailer for a video game and got incredibly excited about what you were seeing but didn't know much about the title only that you would give it a chance when it came out and when it finally did it kind of was a little bit of a letdown despite being a solid game well that's kind of how i feel about void bastards what's going on guys randall thor 19 the man with the million back again with another review hope everybody is having a great day no matter where you are and if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like and maybe consider subscribing to the channel for more content. So Void Bastards comes out tomorrow on the Xbox One and the PC for $30, and it is also part of your subscription to Xbox Game Pass. Now this game first caught my attention back at XO18 when they showed off a trailer, and it looked really cool. The visual art style, uh, the hook saying that is from the creators of Bioshock, and I wanted to try it out. Well, I did, and while the game's best feature is how it looks, I mean, just look at this game. It is a living comic book. It does have its issues, which has kind of led me to the point of not wanting to play it anymore. So, uh, Void Bastards is a procedurally generated roguelite strategy shooter, and you have kind of one mission in the game, and it's very basic. And that is to escape the Sargosa Nebula. Now you don't play as one particular prisoner, you play as a whole bunch of prisoners. Because you will die. But when you do die, well, you just get a new character with a different perk than before. I had a character who every time they picked up an item would yell Yahoo. But then I had another character who actually... Uh, picked up all the items with uh, within range of me, right? So you get different characters that have different abilities. And the goal is to collect parts scattered throughout uh, these derelict ships on a map uh, to build the items that you need to escape, right? It's a very simplistic game. And for the first like four hours, I was actually kind of really enjoying myself. But then the repetition set in. You see, when you go to the map screen and you plot out the direction you want to go, because the game will always point you to the item that you need to get to continue on with the story, you have to keep in mind that every move on the map will take up one food and one fuel. And when you hover over the different spots, the different spaceships that you can go to, it will give you a whole bunch of different information. What type of enemies are there, any modifiers, what type of uh, loot and things you will find there. So you pick it and you go there. And that's where the fun begins or the repetition starts. It is a decent shooter. I mean, you don't aim down sights or anything and the weapons are fun to use, although I am partial to the pistol. You shoot with right trigger, it's very basic. You run with left trigger. But I find myself doing the same things throughout the levels. You go into the level, you try to find the helm, which you can download the map to the level so you can find all the different loot. You pick up everything and you make your escape. Now, there is a risk reward element that the game does have. All your you know, ammo and your food are precious commodities. So if you go into a level with a hundred bullets and you waste 60 of them, well, for the next time you dock at a derelict spaceship, you're only gonna have 40 bullets. So it does kind of force you to uh, switch weapons or actually make pit stops to find things you actually need. Like, oh, I only have two fuel left. That means I could make two jumps. Well, I better find some fuel in my next stop or else, well, I'm just gonna drift in space. So the game kind of forces you to make pit stops, uh, search the different areas and find the things that you need. And like I said, for the first couple hours, I was enjoying it. But eventually I got farther. I got to the second level of the nebula got to the third level of the nebula and got to the fourth and the game started throwing tougher enemies at me and it just became uh, a type of game that I didn't really enjoy anymore there wasn't really an overarching focus to the story it was just like hey get these parts you're a prisoner do as we say we kind of need to get out of here and I would go into a level and you know even though it's procedurally generated 
uh, it kind of all looks the same. So it's just, I don't, I don't like speaking bad about a game because the game's not bad. I understand and I feel that like a lot of people will like a game like this. It's just in two genres that I don't particularly care for. The procedural generated and roguelike. I love the art style. The combat's kind of cool. I even like the look of the enemies and it plays well. It's just I find myself getting bored. And when I do die, and you kind of get little checkpoints, so when you actually in the like the fourth level of the nebula, you kind of start there, so you don't gotta start over at the beginning, and you keep all the things that you've built with all your different uh, you know tools and loot, so you don't really lose anything other than just the character and the perks he may or may not have, and then you'll just you know be given here's here's more food, here's more water, go collect it. But I just kind of kept in running into roadblocks and that made me not want to play and they call it a strategy shooter because there are different kind of ways to play there is some amount of strategy you can go about this right there are some enemies that are really tough but you can lock doors so you can essentially bring a really tough enemy into a room leave the room and lock the door so he can't get out if there are some turrets scattered about well, you can just go to the security terminal and turn them off. There's a lot of different ways to actually get through objectives without just killing anybody, which I don't really recommend because bullets are precious and it's all about trying to, you know, minimize the risk reward or maximize it. Like how often do you want to sp stay in the spaceship, find all the things you want, but you also got to be mindful that uh, there's a timer. Yes, you're in space, so you have an oxygen meter uh, so that's constantly ticking down that's just another thing you got to keep your eye out on and my seven hours of playtime I never came close to running out of oxygen because each one of these spaceships are constructed very similarly right you have the helm in the front which will let you download the map which I recommend you doing because it will put all of the loot and locations you should visit to get that stuff on your in-game map. The FTL drive is in the rear where you can get some fuel. Um, and there's an oxygen station in each one of these things. So when you get low on oxygen, you can go there and fill her up. Sometimes when you come to a station, it might have its power off. So you need to go find the generator and turn it on. Sometimes there'll be random uh, elements to the space station, like uh, the power will turn off randomly and you got to go do that a lot of different things some might have high radiation levels or electricity cables running on the floors they try to spice up the gameplay by you know having different sets of enemies that are harder or easier and things like that and like I said for the first couple hours it's like yeah this game's kind of cool but by hour seven hour eight it was just became boring and I was like I felt like I had seen everything the game had to offer at this point and it was just like oh I need another thing that they want me to get to build this other thing they want me to do and oh I collected everything for this action item that the game wants and look now I gotta go do it all over again to find something else and they're constantly throwing more things at you because as you, the deeper you go into the nebula you'll even have space pirates kind of orbit the derelict spaceships that you you know need to dock and find the items and if you're in the same node as them they become attached to you and the only way to stop them is by having your torpedo which you would get on a different stop and you would instantly kill them or if you don't have a torpedo well the next time you actually stop at one of the spaceships to loot it and salvage everything on there the space pirates will be there and they are, they're assholes to fight. And before you can leave, you gotta untether them. But uh, trust me, I think I fought them three or four times and they just chew through your armor. Now I do appreciate the fact that when you die, you keep everything. That is really good because in most roguelike games, uh, you lose everything because if that was the case, I would have quit this game the first time I died because I can't stand that. But at the end of the day, Void Bastards was a game I was looking forward to. It looks amazing. It looks like a comic book come to life. It plays well. Just unfortunately, it's in a genre, two genres that I just don't care for. That's the procedurally generated stuff and the roguelite stuff. 
And um, because of that, I'm going to stop playing at 8 hours. I'm not going to finish it. But it's not really a knock on the game. I don't hate it. It's not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. And if you're into the stuff like this, I recommend you check it out. Whether it's at 30 bucks or on Xbox Game Pass where you can try it out. But for me, I'm going to give the game a 6.5. And I'm, you know what, I feel a little bit generous. I'll bump that up to a 7. But I'm never going to play it again. Anyways, guys, that's my review for Void Bastards. I hope you liked it. If you did, uh, make sure to hit that like button, share it out on social media, tell a friend about the channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. If it was your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you always want to be notified immediately when I drop new content like this, make sure you hit that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Later, guys.